All right, guys, how's it going? Um, I've got another update for you. Uh, been a little bit since that last one. Um, wanted to do one last week, didn't really get a chance to. Um, March has been shaping up to be just as crazy as last month for me. And then, um, of course, everybody knows what's going on with the coronavirus and all that stupid bullshit right now. Um, so, yeah, it's just been a crazy first couple weeks of March. Um, and, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to get into it. It's just these past couple days with everything and all the cancellations has just not been fun. Not Not been fun news to hear, especially when you've invested so much money. Like, Steel Fest, I was going to go canceled or no they postponed technically but basically is canceled because who knows if that same exact lineup will be what it is next year that it was supposed to be this year um i was supposed to go to a panopticon show in kentucky at the end of the month but that got postponed i'm supposed to go to mdf but nobody knows what's going on with that yet um but at the rate all this other shit is going it wouldn't surprise me if that gets if that gets canceled too. So it's just not been fun. Stupid people freaking out about a flu. That's it. If you're sick, stay the fuck home and stay away from people. It's not that difficult. And then, yeah. But anyways, you guys did not come to this video to hear me rant about stupid white people and the coronavirus. You came here to see some uh, music, to talk about some music. So let's get to that. So, I think we'll start off with the CDs. Um, got a few here. This first one I picked up while I was in Colorado Springs. Uh, me and my girlfriend took kind of an extended weekend down there, and it was very much needed. Um, just incredible. Um, probably one of the coolest things I've ever done. Besides maybe go to Finland for Steel Fest. This was definitely up there. It's one of the coolest things I've ever done in my life. It was just awesome. But anyways, uh, we went to one record store while I was there, um, and I picked this up. This is Catatonia with Last Fair Day Gone Night. This is their live album that they put out uh, of them playing Last Fair Deal Gone uh, live in its entirety, which is pretty cool. Um, I have to say, it's not uh, it's not my favorite Catatonia album by uh, any means, but it was it's, it was still cool to uh it's still cool to have and uh, this is all this also comes with a, a dvd as well i haven't checked out the dvd i've only listened to the uh the uh, live recording but uh cd one has uh, so apparently they did two sets set one was the album and then they did another set of just like stuff from different albums um but set two is only available on the dvd it, they didn't they obviously didn't put that on the CD. Otherwise, this fucker would have had to have been a three CD set. Um, they might have had that on a different release. I, I don't know. But, hang on a second. I got a text here. But yeah, like I said, they might have had that on a different release uh, of this. I think they did. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, still cool. Like I said, I still got to check out that DVD. But, uh, anyways, the live recording is great. It sounds great. Um... I mean, we all kind of know how live albums are <laughs> and how they've always been, so I'm not really sure how much of it is actually live. But anyways, it's still cool. Glad to have uh, picked, picked that up. Uh, next up, picked up these next couple CDs I picked up at a uh, local record store here in St. Louis. We have uh, Limbonic Art with An Abhorrence Dementia. This is their second full length, if memory serves me correctly. So yeah, Limbonic Art, probably one of the best known uh, names in symphonic black metal. So I don't really need to say too much about them. Very nice uh, booklet, whatnot. And just a great album overall. For me, um, Limbonic Art is kind of a... I don't know, for me, they, they peaked with their first album. Um, but th this one's pretty damn close, though. I would say the first two are definitely the best. But uh, there's just something about Moon and the Scorpio that's just incredible. Um, but 
I would say after the first few, they definitely so, sort of started going downhill. Um, so, yeah, not really much else to say about that. But anyways, um, great stuff. Es essential symphonic black metal, if you haven't heard it. And then um, also picked up uh, Legacy of Evil, which is uh, their s either second or third newest album. I don't know. I'm not super familiar with their discography. Uh, but it's one of those two. Uh, we've got 2007 back here as the year, so. And I think they put out an album in 2010, I think. And then their newest album came out, I think, in 2018, maybe 2017. It was within the last couple of years. Um, so, yeah, this is either their second or third newest uh, release. I don't remember which. But, yeah, um, this is definitely, um, like I said, this is very much a decline unfortunately for lumbonic art but this is still a pretty decent album uh nonetheless there are some parts on this album where i was just i'm just i don't really feel it a whole lot but then there's other parts that are just like damn this is this is really good you know so i don't know you know it is what it is it's just kind of one of those things that I've mentioned before, which when bands try to be different and it doesn't work out. Hence the reason why I said bands should just shut the fuck up and play riffs, because that's what fucking matters. But anyways, um, like I said, still a decent album. Nonetheless, that's Limbonic Art with Legacy of Evil. And the last CD here, <laughs> actually got this from a half-priced books, um, if you can believe that. This is Macabre Omen with The Ancient Returns. So I actually have this on vinyl too, but this was only like a few dollars, so I, I couldn't really resist picking it up. So I mean, but Macabre Omen is fantastic, excellent, um, kind of epic, I guess you could call it epic pagan, maybe maybe not pagan, I don't know, kind of like epic black metal from uh, uh, Greece, if you couldn't fucking tell, even just from the album cover, you know, and then from this right here, from, yeah, that right there, if you couldn't tell. But yeah, excellent stuff. I hate that it's a fucking digipack, but like I said, this was only a few dollars, so I couldn't really complain. And uh, this band is awesome, and it, it's really a shame that they don't get a lot of attention, but um, I also uh, don't know if this band has done anything recently. I think this is like their second album. Um, I don't know. I'll have, to check on, I'll have to check up on it, though. But anyways, if you haven't checked out Macabre Oven, macabre omen you're missing out so uh give it a listen good stuff that's macabre omen with the ancient returns all right let's move on to the tapes first up we have a droop with blood in our wells uh droops droops fourth full length and this is the recent cassette reissue through dread records who are currently in the process of reissuing all of the droop albums on cassette tape for some reason, uh, they skipped The Swan Road, which I think The Swan Road is the third album. Pretty sure it is, because according to Metal Archives, this is the fourth, and then I think Swan Road is the third. For some reason, they skipped that one when they were doing these reissues. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, uh, these are limited to 100 copies, hand-numbered. I have number 17. So again, another uh, great reissue done by Dread Records. Uh, Miguel always does a great job with these reissues, so can't have no complaints whatsoever. So yeah, good stuff. Droop Blood in Our Wells. Droop is a fairly well-known band. Don't need to say too much about them. Next up, we have a uh, USBM act that's really been kind of picking up some popularity in the underground. Uh, this is Valak with Years Deprived. So yeah, one man, uh, raw USBM project. Um, I believe this is, uh, I think this is supposed to be a demo. It's not a full length, I know that. Uh, released through Appalachian Noise Records. Just comes with just a simple J card, nothing special. But yeah, excellent raw US black metal. Uh, one of the better one of the better raw black metal bands uh, going these days. 
I mean, as we as we know, it's just a, it's a fucking cesspool of raw black metal bands these days. So it's really nice when you can weed out, you know, the good ones, and this is one of them. So give Valak a listen if you haven't. That's Valak with Years Deprived. All right, next up we have a Russian band that I believe I talked about uh, in my last video. It'll, yeah, yeah, it was definitely the last video. We have Wintar with Inner Sorrow. So Wintar is a um, very interesting project. I mean, this dude just has a shit ton of releases. It, 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 it's borderline dry in the light. It's just a shit ton of releases, shit ton of albums, bunch of splits, and all that good stuff. But this is just a project that I'm absolutely in love with. Um, I think every, every release this guy does is just gold. So yeah, nice little booklet there. Um, released through Snowfalls Forever, limited to 65 copies of number 11. Just a uh, good atmospheric black metal. Um, and you also have your kind of like more straightforward kind of black metal points or black metal parts, especially on like the later releases, um, which this is one of them, which honestly is kind of funny to say considering this project has literally only been active i think for like six years maybe not even that and this dude is already stacked on releases um but fuck dude if you, if you just if you want a great band to go check out and to just get lost in the discography wintar is definitely a band you should go check out um just excellent stuff so yeah that's uh wintar with inner sorrow and then I also picked up uh, The Barrel Moon Mist, another great one, released through the same label, and I bought both of these from their band camp, which is right there on the J card, and this also was limited to 65, I have number 8. So yeah, just a single J card there. Um, they've also got these listed on Discogs as well, so if you didn't want to, and they're super cheap, they're like, I think it's like, I can't remember off the top of my head, you know what, I'm going to check right now. Yeah, it's, it's super cheap, and the shipping is not bad either. Forgot I didn't buy these off Discogs. I bought them straight from the Bandcamp. So I'm looking through my purchases on. Uh, yep, this is it. Yeah, like five dollars. Seriously, it's it's a good deal. Good deal for great music. So yeah. And they have uh, more than just two of these available. Uh, they have some of the other albums available as well. So yeah, just go check out Wintar if you have. And I've I've talked about them. I talked about the project many times. So hopefully you guys go check it out if you haven't. One second here. All right. All right, let's go to the records now. So this first record is um, a Finnish classic. Just got reissued on vinyl. This is Azazel with uh, The Night of the Satanikia. Satan Satanikia, I think it's how it's pronounced. But yeah, re reissued through Inferno Profundus. Really good reissue. Um, I wasn't expecting this reissue to be this nice, but goddamn, it's, it's nice. So yeah, um... Zazzle, I think, um, I mean, this release is definitely, um, at least in my opinion, it's like not nothing, it's nothing groundbreaking, it's nothing extremely interesting, but if you want something that's entertaining and just, you know, straightforward black metal, 
whatever early. I mean, this might as well be, this is basically part of the second wave of black metal. I mean, this came out in the early 90s. But for some reason, uh, this release really kind of gets left out when people talk about early Finnish black metal. I mean, most people will talk about, most people will talk about Beharit or Archgoat or even though Archgoat isn't really black metal. Definitely more of a death metal band in my opinion. And then you got Impaled Nazarene, but you don't really see a lot of people talk about Azazel when you talk about early Finnish black metal, and it's kind of a, it's kind of weird. But yeah. So it comes with a printed inner sheet here. It also comes with a poster, which the poster is just black and white, which honestly I, I kind of like it. I've considered hanging that fucker up cause just because it looks so good. And then I think this guy had a limitation. I want to say it was 300 copies. Uh, I think it was like 200 black and 100 red. I'm probably wrong though. That's just my guess, but I got the red vinyl. And of course, I think, uh, sadly, I think these days Azazel is best known for their infamous performance at Steel Fest a few years back, where uh, I can't remember if it was one of the guitar players or the bass player, somebody like fell down because he was so fucking drunk. It's, the whole band was fucking wasted. I'm pretty sure videos on you are still up on YouTube, but anyways... Um, <laughs> If you've if you've seen that and you've never really listened to Azazel, um, definitely I definitely recommend checking this out. This is definitely a staple in the early Finnish scene, and it definitely deserves some more attention. So yeah, check it out if you haven't. That's Azazel with the Knight of Satanikia. All right, and uh, next we have uh, some more talk about some more Finnish shit. Something else that just recently got reissued. We have Behexen with My Soul for His Glory. Behexen's third full length. So, Debbie Remorty just reissued all of the Behexen albums except By the Blessing of Satan. So, which I don't quite understand that at all. And if anybody wants a download code, there you go, because I don't need it. But, anyways, yeah. They reissued all of them except By the Blessing of Satan. Why? I don't know. Maybe they weren't able to get the rights, uh, get the permission to uh, do it. I don't know, which is dumb. By the Blessing of Satan is, in my opinion, the Hexen's best album. That is, that's where they peaked. They haven't, in my opinion, they have not topped that album since. Uh, it comes with a nice big booklet. Debra Morty uh, does some pretty nice releases, uh, vinyl releases, so yeah, very nice, and each, uh, each vinyl release I think was only, I want to say was only limited to the same variant, I could be wrong, maybe they did do black vinyl variants of all these, I can't remember to be honest, but anyways, uh, this one came on this kind of variant, very, very cool. Like I said, they, they gave each reissue their own color variant, like like this. So it's very cool, and it matches the album cover, so that's nice. It's kind of got the gold, white, and black thing going on, so it's very nice. Um, <clears throat> so, as far as the music goes, like I said, this is definitely... This is definitely a step down from By the Blessing of Satan, which came out bef right before this. I mean, I think the thing, I think the thing with Behexen's uh, later material is just the whole um, usage of the kind of death metal style vocals, which I've said in the past is sometimes either it works out and sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes Behexen, with it, it works out, and sometimes it just sounds too much like Behemoth. So, you know, it is what it is. But anyways, glad to finally own this album, because the first press was like $80 plus. So maybe, maybe not that much, but 
you know what I'm saying? I'm just glad these finally got repressed because I was able to fill that hole in the collection. And then we have the fourth the hex and full length, which is Nightside Emanations. So for me, uh, now, before I got these reissues, I had not listened to either of these two albums in a long time. Um, and I actually think I preferred this one over My Soul for His Glory, which is kind of weird. Because I remember liking My Soul for His Glory a lot more than this one. And then when I was listening to both of them back to back, I was like, damn, I was like, this one's actually really fucking good. <laughs> Another one I haven't listened to a while, in a while is the newest one, so I really need to go back and spin that one, because it's definitely been a minute since I've listened to that one. But anyways, Nightside Emanations. So this one differs from My Soul for His Glory, as in the booklet is attached to the gatefold, so that's kind of nice. I won't show every uh, picture, page, whatever. And then... Here is the final. Very, very nice. I mean, it's we're pretty overdue for a new Behexen album. Um, but with everything that's going on right now, everything is literally just going to get delayed. Just for no fucking reason. You know, because that's just the way it is. So... But, anyways, um, I'm not sure if these reissues, what's left of them, but if you're needing any of them to fill a hole in the collection, you might as well. It's definitely worth checking Debra Ramorty's shop to see if they have any left. Um, like I said, they did all of them except by the blessing of Satan, so, yeah. Behexen, Nightside Emanations, and My Soul for His Glory. All right, uh, this next one I picked up while I was in Colorado Springs. Uh, one uh, Drew album that I didn't have. This is A Furrow Cut Short. And I think this is uh, Drew's either second or third newest album. I can't remember. Drew has a lot of albums, so I, yeah, I just can't keep up with it. Or I don't have their discography, you know, memorized in my head, so... But yeah, Nice Gatefold, uh, released on Season of Mist, Underground Activists. Comes on this very nice kind of orange, semi-transparent vinyl, whatever the hell you want to call it. And it is a double LP. And this is also the newest reissue as well. So yeah, as far as the music goes, uh, this is just Droop doing Droop. Um, I mean, they're one of those bands that found a formula, and it's great. They stuck to it. So, yeah, can't complain. So yeah, that's Droop with a furrow cut short. Alright, so this next one is an eBay pickup. Got some more uh, Catatonia. This is Viva Emptiness. Definitely one of my favorite Catatonia albums, probably in the top three. Um, or at least in the top five, at, at least. Again, uh, reissued on Peaceville, just like the rest of them. Very, very nice. And, uh... Printed in her sleeves, and I believe it was just black vinyl. Yeah, just black vinyl. Here's the other printed in her sleeve. Very cool. fucker back in here so I can move the fuck on. Alright. Catatonia, Viva Emptiness. Great album. 
And next up we have a French band. We have uh, Osculemin fame with their uh, first full length that I'm not going to try and pronounce. Uh, vinyl, vinyl reissue through uh, Impure Wedding, which I had never heard of that label before this came out. <laughs> But anyways, um, Osculum and Fame, <clears throat> another band that was supposed to play Steel Fest before it got postponed. They were supposed to be doing a, uh, a special set for this album, and I was very much looking forward to that because this album is fantastic. Excellent use of keyboards. Um, I, just, I love it when black metal bands can use keyboards that kind of carry that kind of act as the riff like they can kind of, they can just carry it can stand on its own and still sound good like it's not it doesn't sound oversaturated like it's it's used properly and um this is one of those bands that does a fantastic job of it and uh there's the gatefold i can't remember if i showed the gatefold or not I'm pretty sure this fucker is sold out, but they also reissued it on cassette and CD, so if you can't get the vinyl, you can always try for one of those, whatever's available. Just black vinyl. But yeah, definitely, definitely, um, out of everything I'm going to show in this video, I definitely recommend checking this one out um, probably the most out of everything I'm gonna show because this this is this is awesome. Just excellent, excellent French black metal. That's Osculum in Fame. I have talked about that band before on this channel too. Um it's been several months, but I have talked about them before because I have another one of their records. Alright, next up, I believe this is my first I think this is the first 2020 release that I'm gonna show for the year. Excuse me. We have the True Werewolf with Devil Crisis. So this has been a long time coming. As most people that are familiar with the project know, the True Werewolf has been one of um, Lori's projects for some time now. And he finally decided to put out a full length. Very nice gatefold there. Um, there were several different variants of this record. And I know... I think this album cover was like a, an exclusive to the variant. I don't know. There's two different album covers. Maybe even three. I don't know. Like I said, there was a bunch of different variants uh, for this album when it, when it first came out. Which, I have to say, I'm not a huge fan of the album cover. Either album cover, but that's beside the, po besides the point. Um, because the music is great. Uh, comes with a poster, which I'm not crazy about the poster either, but I mean, I guess it is kind of cool. Um, yeah, whatever. It's cool. And here is the vinyl variant uh, that I got. This is called the Red and Black, I think, or Black and Red, whatever, whichever. It was one of those two was the name of it. But yeah, as far as the music goes, um, this is definitely kind of a mixture of different styles. You have kind of like, <clears throat> you know, very Satanic Warmaster sounding stuff. Um, the last track on the album, you know, is, more, is kind of like a heavy metal related song, which honestly I think that's a... I can't remember off the, top, off the top of my head, but I thought somebody told me that that was a cover. I don't remember. Which I'm probably going to get crucified for not knowing that, but I honestly don't know. And then you also have kind of like um, the tracks that are more keyboard oriented. Just way more than what you would hear on a Satanic War Master song. So, because I've heard a bunch of people say that this is basically you know, a follow-up to Fimble Winter, which that's absolutely not the case. Yes, there are a couple tracks on here that could have e that could easily be on a Satanic War Master follow-up, but this album as a whole sounds nothing like 
thimble winter in its in its hole. So yeah. But anyways, um, great release overall. Um, yeah, True Werewolf with Devil Crisis. I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to be talking about that album. So. All right, the last two records are ones that I picked up uh, when I was in Colorado Springs at that same record store, uh, both by the same band, a band that I've been wanting to get more stuff by, uh, a band that I've been wanting to get more stuff from for a while now. Um, I was kind of pissed, though, because I kind of found out that I overspent on them a little bit, but um, I just, I was just like, whatever, you know, it's too late now. <laughs> But anyways, uh, we have Winter Filleth with The Ghost of Heritage. So Winter Filleth is uh, just kind of an atmospheric black metal band from the UK. Great project. Um, there's everything this, these guys have done has just been great. So you got a nice gatefold there with lyrics. Uh, put out through Candlelight Reissue, Candlelight Reissue through Candlelight and Spine Farm. It's been a long day. Shut up. <laughs> If you if you follow me on Instagram or you're friends with me on Facebook, I posted something on my story today. And if you're wondering why I seem a little out of it, that's why. Because I was dealing with that fucker. And I'm just glad to be done with it. But anyways, uh, double LP. So this is Winter Phyllis' first full length. And I'll be the first to say that this is definitely my least favorite out of all of their albums. Um... They definitely, it's not bad by any means. It's it's a still a great album. It's just, uh, it's just you could tell you can tell they were just kind of like, this is just their introduction into what they would become. Like, like later down the road, they would incorporate much more kind of like, I don't know if I want to say folk influences, just just di different things that made that makes their later albums much better but this is still a great album just in my opinion it's their worst album which that's not saying much because as i said this band is awesome but uh yeah definitely go check out winter filth if you haven't they have a handful of albums to check out so just great band and we have the Thernody of Triumph, which is uh, the second or third album, one of the two. Pretty sure it's the third, though. Um, again, another uh, Candlelight reissue. And Gatefold, Lyrics. So this album is one of the best, in my opinion, along with... Uh, damn. Shit, I can't remember the name of it. can't remember the name of it but anyways yeah this is definitely one of the best in my opinion we have uh blue vinyl so very nice So yeah, check out Winterfellth if you haven't. You won't be disappointed. Um, that's it for this video, guys. So, oh, what is today? I think today's the 13th. Yeah, that's right, because it's Friday the 13th. Because everybody makes those god-awful Friday the 13th jokes. And stupid Facebook memes. Uh, but anyways, the next couple weeks are going to be pretty busy for me. So... I mean, the hope is to have another video up by the end of the month, but we'll see. May not see another video until uh, until maybe early April. Just depends. But anyways, um, thanks for watching, guys. Um, I appreciate I appreciate it, especially for those of you that stick around through the long ass videos that I do. But uh, yeah, take care, guys. Um, be careful. Make sure you stock up on toilet paper because that's the most important thing during this great time of peril. Anyways, I'm done.
Take care, guys.